the resistance to it correlate with the production of gamma interferon on development of T helper 1 stimulation. And the effective treatment and vaccination of the leishmania is biased towards the helper 2 response, which is the humoral immunity. And as you know, the destruction of the tissue on the skin and the soft tissue due to leishmania, due to activation of the cell mediated immunity on the macrophage and the gamma infection or these, which is lead to destruction of the soft tissue and with the scar on the skin. While immune response to the warm elements and the best example, Schistosoma mansoni, that causes Bilharzia, and the egg stimulate the delayed type hypersensitivity lead to granuloma formation when the female uh, of Schistosoma laid its uh, egg in the wall of the uh, bladder lead to formation of egg granuloma. While the worm can evade the immune response by decreasing the expression of the antigen on its cell surface, and enclosed itself with the glycolipid coat mass to mask that's uh, mask its own antigen so the immune response did not recognize it and the immune response to uh, uh, to it stimulate key health part two with high titer of the ige that increased in the granulation of mast cell and influx of eosinophil then bind to antibody coated worms inducing the granulation and death of the parasite via the ADCC, antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. So here, it's type 1 hypersensitivity reaction due to uh, uh, stimulation and production of the IgE antibody. Now, the another, inf uh, another pathogen is the fungus. Fungal infection, the innate immunity is the first barrier, neutrophil, which is a strong defense against it, and toll like receptor, complement receptor, and normal flora inhibit the fungal growth. And the cell, if the innate immunity fails to eradicate the fungus, so the cell mediated immune response will act against the fungal infection and stimulate the T helper 1 cell with gamma interferon production and with formation granuloma and the fungi remain dormant inside it. And uh, nowadays they found that T helper 17 had a regulatory role in controlling the adaptive immunity that help T helper 1 cell and discourage T helper 2. And fungi produce capsules to evade the immune response and expulsion from the macrophage. Now we have the new subject which is called uh, vaccines. Vaccines, it's, uh, this is a history, part history of the uh, vaccine, which is uh, developed by the English physicians Edward Chinner in 1798, uh, made a giant advance in the development of the immunity when uh, he found that the uh, milk meats that deal with the infected uh, cows with the cow box so they get uh, immunized from this virus. So the Edward Chinar used the uh, fluid in the pasture of these uh, uh, cow box and start to immunize the uh, <coughs> population <coughs> against this uh, cow box. And later on, uh, Louis Pasture worked on power cholera and proved that uh, uh, aging had uh, weakened the virulence of the uh, pathogen. So vaccination is attempt to induce immunity intentionally. And vaccine from the Latin word vaca, which is mean cow, due to the cow box in honor of uh, Edward Chinner's work with cow box inoculation. How, do, how can we design vaccine uh, for active immunization? Vaccination educates the adaptive immunity system, preparing uh, it to deal effectively with pathogens not readily eliminated by innate immunity. And uh, know the branch of the immune system that is activated, the humoral or cellular, and their development of the immunologic memory. So when we design a vaccine, we must uh, educate the adaptive immunity. And second, we know the which type of the immune response to this pathogen it is a humoral or it's a cellular. So every pathogen is, uh, uh, stimulates the humoral immunity 
So I design a vaccine that stimulates the human immune response, while if the uh, pathogen stimulates cell-mediated immunity, so I designed a vaccine that stimulates the cell-mediated immunity and not vice versa. And uh, my vaccine, I, I must design a vaccine that induces immunologic memory. So uh, a vaccine without immunologic memory, so it's of no benefit. So these three factors must be put in mind in order to design a vaccine for active immunization. Types of vaccine. First, we have live attenuated vaccine. And some microorganisms can be attenuated, so they lost their ability to cause significant disease pathogenicity, but retain their capacity for uh, transient growth within an inoculated host. And the attenuation can be achieved by growing a pathogen for a prolonged periods under abnormal uh, culture conditions. For example, in bacteria, that grow in, uh, at 37 centigrade, which is the temperature of the body, and allow these uh, bacteria to grow at 40 centigrade. So this uh, bacteria that grow at 40 centigrade uses as a vaccine. Second, attenuated strain of Mycobacterium povis, which is called Bacillus calamiturin BCG, stimulate the cell mediated immunity and use and treat the uh, used uh, in, in vaccination against the TB. And uh, measles, mumps, rubella, the MMR, and the polio, sabin vaccine consists of three attenuated strains of polio. And uh, this is already given and stimulates the secretory IgA in the intestine because it is a fecal-oral uh, transmission. And we must uh, uh, stimulate the uh, immunity in the intestine by production of secretory IgA, so give the vaccine orally. And this is a uh, uh, sabin vaccine, which is lift attenuated uh, strain of the polio, include three strains of the polio virus, and this uh, lift attenuated not limited to the uh, immune suppressed patient because this leads to infection with polio uh, virus. A second type of vaccine, inactivated or cold vaccine, and this can be achieved by the heat or chemicals like formalin. And pathogen is not capable of replicate, but it retains its antigenicity. Heat inactivation is of an unsatisfactory because it causes extensive damage to the protein. And as we know that the anti most potent antigen is a protein, so we, when we use heat to inactivate the Pathogen, so fill the protein and denaturate. Uh, sorry, so we denaturate the protein and it's become of no benefit. And this is like a cholera, a polio, uh, which is called the sulk vaccine and the rabies. And here, a polio sulk vaccine, which is killed, give it to patients with immune suppression because the virus is killed and not induce uh, infection. The differences between or, or the advantages of the live attenuated vaccine induce a strong immune response because it uh, uh, causes subclinical infection and this is li give lifelong immunity and give it single dose as a TB, uh, as a tuberculosis uh, uh, BCG for use for tuberculosis vaccine. Give it only single dose. Uh, first week of uh, life. While well, this advantage of liver attenuated requires refrigerator storage, and we did not have electricity, so this is <coughs> a major problem. And many mutated, uh, may mutated to virulent form, and may be associated with complications similar to those seen in natural infection. For example, measles uh, vaccine may cause complications like uh, encephalitis. While well, the advantage of a cold vaccine, stable, say what, not need refrigeration, so no need uh, whether there is electricity or not. And this advantage, uh, weaker immune response requires booster dose. And as we uh, know that the uh, vaccine, give it at two months, four months, six months, which is uh, uh, called booster dose, and less effective in inducing cell mediated immunity. And not all pathogens will be killed by the chemicals. <coughs> Another type of vaccine, which is called topsoil vaccines, 
and here use uh, uh, bacterial products that uh, some bacteria produce toxin, exotoxin, and we use this toxin. <clears throat> and we use this toxin and inactivate it by formalin to form what's called toxoid. And this leads to for, uh, formation of anti toxoid antibodies. <clears throat> the best example is bacteria and the tetanus, and the immune system are primed to recognize bacterial toxin. And diseases in those exposed to tetanus can be prevented by treatment with tetanus antitoxin. Another type of vaccine, subunit vaccine, consists of uh, specific purified molecules from the uh, derived from the pathogen like bacterial polysaccharide capsule. So to, for example, Streptococcus pneumoniae consists of 23 antigenically different capsular polysaccharides, and this vaccine induces formation of oxonizing antibody. Another example, Neisseria meningitis. Another type of vaccine, conjugate vaccine. Here, certain bacteria have polysaccharide uh, that coats uh, the bacteria, and this is poorly immunogenic, and so link it with another protein, which is, uh, for example, toxin, to induce the immune system. And then the immune system will recognize the polysaccharide uh, as if it is where protein antigen. This approach is used in uh, the uh, Haemophilus influenzae. <coughs> Sorry, Haemophilus influenzae type B vaccine. <coughs> Recombinant uh, vaccine. Here we start to use the genetic engineering techniques to provide a way to attenuate a virus by selectively removing genes that are necessary for the virulence and only, uh, uh, only select the genes that are responsible for the antigenicity. And the basis of these new vaccines is the identification of proteins of the infectious agents that are able to induce an immune response in a similar way to that produced by the whole agent. Using genetic engineering, the genes coding for, the, uh, for those proteins can be selected and then cloned in the plasmid and then expressed using different vectors like bacteria or yeast. Bacteria like use E. coli or yeast or mammalian cells using recombinant DNA technology. And the best example is the hepatitis B e vaccine. The another type of vaccine, DNA vaccine, which is created from infectious agent DNA, it works by insertion of viral or bacterial DNA into a human cell. Some cells of the immune system that recognize the uh, proteins expressed will mount and attack against these proteins and cells expressing them because these cells and because these cells live for uh, for a very long uh, time every pathogen that normally expresses these proteins is encountered at a later time they will be attacked instantly by the immune system and this type of the DNA vaccination is, uh, is still experimental and thank you